Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Autodesk Fusion. And to the right we have an empty workspace, I have made a save, so I got auto save running. And to the left we have a small drawing, this is from a Reddit question about making this shape in Fusion. So this is how I would do it, there are a lot of other ways people suggest different workflows in the thread about this. And I find some of them uh, good and some of them less good. They're not really bad. There's different ways of doing things. When I see something it, talking about a cone shape, cone shapes are symmetrical around a center axis. So if we open up a create menu, we have extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft. The obvious tool to use is revolve. Revolve needs a center axis and a profile with a side profile that you're going to revolve. In this case, all the dimensions are given from the side. So that suits very much our design intent. So let's start by creating a sketch from the front. We're going to do some lines. I'm going to sketch the outer shape first. I will not spend time making the cutouts. We'll make them later using features. I'm going to line, make sure I we get these basic uh, constraints, it's like horizontal vertical here. Thank you. I'm going to go up. Now I want to find the point down here. So I'm going to move the mouse cursor down here. You get this small dashed line, move up until I get the parallel constraint and then straight down. So Fusion is adding the perpendicular constraint, horizontal constraint, and the parallel constraint. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to hit escape to stop the line command. And now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to use Revolve. Now revolve needs an axis, and it's going to be this line. So by taking this line, change the line type to center line. Fusion understands this is the axis of rotation. Uh, after that, I'm going to hit D on the keyboard for dimension. Now I need to choose. Uh, yeah, we can start or finish by selecting the center line. If you select the center line, Fusion understands you want a diameter dimension. It's going to do the bottom diameter first. Select the line. Select this point here. Move down here and type in 65. You can say we can get a, we get a diameter dimension, not the radius of a circle. We can do it the other way around. We select the point first and then the line. We get this. I'm going to do escape just to show you slightly differently. If I select these two points... I get a dimension half the diameter. It's a bit confusing. I'd like to uh, pick up the dimension from the drawing or from the sketch or whatever you have, 85. So you can see, and of course we need the height was 110. You can see in this little sketch I made, I have the same dimension that I have for my measuring from a real world device. So make it easy to see where the number comes from. That's my thinking. Uh, we can open up sketch, have a look. Of course, this sketch is fully defined. There's nothing strange. Finish sketch. Going to do revolve. Click on that. And Fusion understands. It sees one profile. It sees one uh, center line. It uses the center lines for axis of rotation. And we have a revolve body. Hit OK. You can see. We can open up so we can see the body here. Uh, my sketch did not auto hide. That's a preference setting. So I'm going to hide the sketch. I don't need it right now. And I'm going to do a shell because we want constant wall thickness. Let's make it three millimeters for now. Quite thick walls. I'm gonna play around that right there. You can see I, this is visual style. I can see the hidden inside edges. By doing control six, I can hide the inside edges. It's really useful for seeing things in different ways. So now we're gonna make these like ribs or what Fusion call webs. Create a sketch, do it on the top face here. Make sure, oh, it flips around. Sometimes Fusion flips when you click. So I want to have a top. So I have a, if you see the text top here, that means that this here is the front view. That's the way I want to work. So this is my front view. I'm going to do some lines. I'm going to do one line in this direction and do one more line in this direction. I will use well, the what's called the web feature. I mean, coincident constraint between this one and here. Oh, I forget to say one thing. Uh, this line here is not through the center of the circle. You can see it's slightly here. The center of the circle is slightly up here. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to make this equal. Like that. I'm going to make one of them a small dimension. Like this one here. Let's make that 12. So the lines are not connecting to the edges. They're not projected in anything from any any other parts of a body or sketch because finish sketch we are now going to use the web feature create click on the web feature 
And it has a thing here with extend curves. Even if you turn that off, I can select one line to show you. If I do this here and I give it a wall thickness by one, you can see that sometimes it just understands. I'm going to extend curves and it extends in both directions. And I don't want that. We could do the line out and project of it, but we'll make it in two steps. I think that's easier. That's my preferred way of doing things. So I will start by doing this line here. Make sure extend curve starts activated so it makes goes all the way out. You can see you can change uh, position and stuff. You can make it uh, thickness direction symmetrical or one side. Let's do that 1.5. And now I will repeat the same command. I can do that, that by holding down right mouse button, moving the mouse counter, my mouse pointer upwards, and find the repeat web. Now select this line. Same wall thickness, you can see it picks up from the previous input I did. And I hit OK. And I made the two webs. Now, let's say I want to connect the thickness of these two, so I only need to edit one thing. Use me at most modify, move down to change parameters. Open up our little design, find our two web features. You can see down here, here's the thickness, 1.5, that's D7. Web 2 is also 1.5. I want to link those. So here I'm going to type D7. That means, it's going to move this out of the way. If I change this to 3 millimeters, you see both of them update. I only need to add the number in one place. I'm going to close this for now. So what we've basically done now, we have made our model. Now, let's say I want to do some edits to this. First of all, I like to add a small chamfer to the bottom here, and I might want to change the wall thickness. They become a bit too thick, so I'm going to edit my shell command. I'm going to make those two millimeters, and I like to add a chamfer, and I want, well, if I add a chamfer now, it will go all the way through and touch the inside, so uh, destroy the inside. So I'm going to move back before the shell command, find my modify and my chamfer, Gonna give that a five millimeter chamfer, quite large chamfer. Gonna hit OK, move up the timeline. No errors, and you can see chamfer on the outside, chamfer inside, and the web is working, not penetrating through the body. And yeah, so uh, I print this out, try it out, and it doesn't really look the way I want. I like a more curved outside of the body, so. That means I need to edit the first profile. This is about editing things early in the timeline. This is a very short timeline, but to avoid uh, escalating errors and warnings in the design, I'm going to take the time marker, move it just after Revolve feature. Revolve is based on the first sketch. I'm going to edit this sketch. So I like to change the general profile. So I'm going to take this line. I'm going to turn it into construction line for now so I can like visually still see it. Gonna make two lines. We want I want to make like a spline that goes here, but I don't want to spend the time uh, setting everything up uh, by changing the handles of a spline like that. So I'm gonna do a construction line here. Gonna make that straight up. Let's make that 50. I like to add dimension to everything. I would like to avoid that uh, construction line with no endpoint. You see it goes to black. It's gonna do a line. If I don't add a dimension, I'm gonna do a line down here. You can see, oh sorry, first of all, there's two lines, I'm going to go back and do that once and I control set for undo, make sure I get one line, I'm going to mark this line, turn it into construction line, but you can see we have a white dot here, we see on the sketch, this is not fully defined, we can add a dimension or we can make it equal to this line up here. These two lines are only here to support the next step. Under modify we have blend curves. Activate blend curves, select the line. I like to select it quite close to the direction I want to move, and then move up here, and we get a very bland. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, let's do that. If you see, I move it too far up, I get the blend curve in the wrong direction, and if I do it down here, I get the blend curve I want. I'm gonna hit escape to turn that off, and I select the line and turn it into a normal line, so we get the profile back. So we get this little curved shape instead of a straight line. So I'm going to finish sketch. A revolve feature understands everything. Thank you. Now I'm going to start jumping forward in the timeline. And we get an error. This is a problem with Fusion when you change profiles very early. Sometimes it loses uh, 
it internally does some type of numbering of edges and face and stuff like that and if you change your profile sometimes you lose your reference in this case uh, right click and see review warning uh, reference failure issues or blah 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 yeah this using cache geometry so what we're gonna do right click or double click edit feature and we're gonna select the edge and we're gonna reapply the five millimeters like that and we move the arrow we can now start keep on jumping forward in our timeline sketch web web and we have made a slightly different version. Ah, uh, that shelf is too large. I want to make that three millimeters. So this is how we can make something like the shape here with some small added changes and we can play around with dimensions. We should be able to make this like 125, slightly higher. And the model updates. So we can play around with the model. So I hope some of you found something interesting in this video and something to learn. With that said, take care. See you around and...